doo 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 doo. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of CWK Live. Every Tuesday night at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time, I'm your host, Dan Zare. Thrilled to be talking Star Wars with each and every one of you. Well, look who is here joining us. We have Blake. Hello, Blake. Great to see you, buddy. Welcome back to the show. Brian is returning as well. This is the way Tuesday. Thank you, Brian. Great to see you as always. And of course, Mary is here. Mary says, happy Tuesday, everyone. So sad we don't have any and or episodes. I know. How cool we get to talk about the finale. I've been looking forward to this with all of you. Greg says, hey, hey, happy Tuesday, everyone. Happy to see you, Greg. Always a pleasure. Ross is here. Hello, Ross. Happy CWK Tuesday. Look at everybody. Jason, hello there. Glad to be with you all tonight. Great to see you, Jason. Daniel is here. Hello, Daniel. Good evening to you. Mary says, Christmas has arrived. Yes, in fact, it has. I tried something different this year. I've actually got a Christmas tree, albeit a small one, in the CWK studio. Might try to give you a tour of that. I'm experimenting with some different camera things. We'll see how that goes. And Josh is here, too. Hello there, Josh. Great to see you, Josh. There's Ben. Everybody, back for the finale. Great to have you, Ben. The finale was spectacular. Blake says, work's been crazy recently. Great to be here with the fam. Well, Blake, I know what you do for a living, and I'm sure this is definitely your busy time of the year, so we are glad to see you. Very glad to see you. Uh, so I got my Mickey Mouse. Look at that. Got the Mickey Mouse Christmas shirt ready to rock and roll. I've been wearing a lot of Christmas stuff at school over the past couple of days because you got to, right? You got to. All right, so I did say I would try this, so I'm going to try it. Let's see if I can get this to work. Uh, I've got an update here, and it allows me to um, use my phone as a camera. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a fun little tour. Look at this. So here we go. This is kind of what I see when I'm looking at my monitor. Look, there's all of you. Whoa, surreal. Right in front of me, I've got George looking at me, Han Solo and Carbonite. It's one of the few black series I've kept that I've opened up. A neat little thing my wife put together that uh, Illinois State University did an article on me. Um, then I've got some garland and some lighting as well. Uh, let's see. Spoiler. Look at, I've got some G.I. Joe figures that I look at. I know. I know. Hey, I like G.I. Joe too. What can I say? I've got some of my Mando figures here, the retro ones over here on the wall. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Um, here is all my Kenner figures and my um, a lot of other fun little Disney collectibles that I have. I tried to put them in order of release. This is all the retro, these are all the actual ones I had when I was a kid. And up here, I've, I have like sort of like a barrier or like a wallpapering of all the action figures I've ever had. Hello, Lori. Good to see you. Just giving a little bit of a tour of things here at the studio. Can you hire me to be your interior designer? Well, no. I don't think you'd want that. I took me so long, and I probably drove my wife crazy. Setting us up. Let me show you the Christmas tree. Let me show you the Christmas tree. Now, if the sound goes out, it's because I don't have the mic with me, so I'm just going to show it to you, and then I'll talk about it. And we are back. All right, so I'm definitely going to have to edit that <laughs> when I do the um, – pause. I'll pause the camera. When I do the audio audio for this. But, yeah, there you go. Jason wants to know 
Oh, here we go. Once I finally have an office one day, this is exactly how I want it to look. Well, thank you. This is, I have rearranged it probably three times. I really kind of like to redecorate. Over on the corner, you can see I've got a lot of my Star Wars stockings. Mary says that she spied a Jedi Mickey. Love the vinyl Mations. We have so many of them. I love the vinyl Mations. I was so bummed they stopped making them. They were absolute treasures. And yes, you did find a Jedi Mickey, Mary. And I also have the Indiana Jones one, too. I just don't have room for it. Anthony is here. Hello. He says, hey, everyone. Sorry I've been MIA for a few weeks. Grad school has been a lot this summer. Looking forward to hearing your list for the phenomenal episode. Well, thank you, Anthony. It's great to see you. Congratulations on uh, continuing your your education. I think that's awesome. You're already such a smart guy, and it's going to make you even more, more awesome. How about that? I actually am starting grad school in the spring. I didn't talk about this on the show yet, but I, I have a master's degree in education, but I really want to do some more study of literature and mythology, so I am going to go back to school in the spring to get a, another master's degree, but this one is going to be in literature, so I'm very excited for that, and I hope it will able allow me to be even more analytical on the show. That's kind of the goal. And I like learning more about my craft too. Jason wants to know, how do I dust all those figures? Yeah, well, there's I use a little feather duster thingy, but I also really uh, don't dust as much as I probably should. It's, but I, that's definitely a project I've got in mind for Christmas break. Lori says, love the Christmas lights. Well, thank you. It's an absolute labor of love. I love Christmas so much, as longtime listeners know. Josh says, make, makes a podcast entertaining. Well, great. I am so glad. Daniel says, thanks for the tour. My pleasure, my friend. Uh, Greg wishes me good luck on the Masters. Thanks, buddy. Looking forward to it. Uh, Mary says, congrats. Good luck on your next Masters. Well, thank you, Mary. And Jen is here. Hello, Jen. She says, so excited for you. Well, thank you, Jen. You are definitely an inspiration. You're all inspirations to me, honestly. Just being around you makes me smarter, so I thank you for that. Ben says, very exciting news. Keep learning and growing. Absolutely, man. We have to all be lifelong learners for sure. What school will I be attending? Uh, I am going to uh, Eastern Illinois University for this degree. Dust, the ultimate en enemy to us who display our phantoms. Yes, Blake, I know. I knew you'd sympathize. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, let's do this. Let's talk about what we're going to talk about tonight. Our top five moments from the episode 12, the finale of season one of Andor, Rick's Road. It is quite a spectacular episode. I know so many of you loved it. And of course, I've got um, updates for you from the Bring Home the Galaxy. This is week seven of Bring Home the Galaxy. Let's go ahead and jump into that right now. Okay, so let's take a look at, oh dear, what's that about? Let's adjust that camera, shall we? No, we don't want Dan's iPhone. We want the camera of me. Let's see if I can get that to work. <laughs> Pardon me a moment. I have an idea of how to make this work. Let's disconnect it. There we go. Ben, uh, with the line of the night, I don't like to us, it gets everywhere. Nice job. Well done, sir. Oh, I forgot to play Tom Kane. And now, let's see what's brewing in the Star Wars universe this week. Thank you, Tom. As always, sending our, our best wishes to you, my friend. Let's look at Bring Them the Galaxy week number seven. Some fun things, as always. So one of the first highlights right here is this is, uh, these are Grogu-inspired beanies from Love Your Melon. Uh, there are a number of images. This is the first one that popped up, and I thought it was a great image of the hat itself. Then we have two watches. Uh, there are a number of them. These are from Invicta, I-N-V-I-C-T-A. Uh, there's some some wonderful new watches there. They're heavy. They're beautiful. I really like that Vader especially. It's really nice looking. Really nice looking. Next, we have, and these are brand new. These are, you may recognize Vera Bradley. This is the Mandalorian Inspired Collection. It's a brand new collection. A number of items there for you if you are a Vera Bradley fan. Uh, and like the Mandalorian, as I suspect you do, this is a big a big coup for you. All right, Publix is a grocery store uh, down south. I know they're in Florida. I used to go to them all the time when I worked at Disney World. But Publix is debuted a, a cake, a fun little cake from Deco Pack, available at Publix grocery stores. Lori says she needs those. I assume you're talking about... These, right, Lori? Well, there you go. 
they look they do look really fun all right now we've got some shirts uh this is a scene from rsvlts holiday prints this is um i think it's called like dashing through the hoth or something like that in fact i'll just click the link that was sent over to me and i'll tell you what it actually is called oh it's called deck the hoth well that i was close deck the hoth indeed Mary says, need to look at those Vera Bradleys closer. Well, I will I will post them on the website, and I know stars.com has a great look at them too. Plus, actually, if you go to Vera Bradley's website, you'll see a great little write-up for them. I think you will I think you need to have them, Mary. This is the way, right? And of course, it would not be uh, a brand new day of Star Wars merchandise without some awesome stuff from Hasbro. Now a number of these are from the Black Series. This is Pablo, P-A-P-L-O-O. And that's a nice figure. They've never made a Black Series of Pablo. Brian likes that. He says, Deck the Hoth. It's a, it's a good one. I know you appreciate a good pun. Daniel says, those shirts are a bit pricey. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. I've never seen one in person. They look nice, though. Check out Bib Fortuna. His hand and his nails, these are, again, Black Series, look so creepy. Uh, these are all available summer 2023, by the way. I think the pre-order is going to go up tomorrow at 1 o'clock Central Time, or 1 o'clock Eastern Time, I'm sorry. So there's Bib Fortuna. This is Chewbacca. These are all, of course, from Return of the Jedi. You can tell by the way Chewbacca's mane and his hair looks and the chain around his neck. I always thought it was very unique how it looked in the movie as far as his hair, his head went, looked in Return of the Jedi. I'm not explaining that very well, but I think you know what I mean. Now look at the Emperor. He looks like the one from Robot Chicken, I think. I mean, he looks creepy. Creep sauce, as we sometimes say at my house. He looks creep sauce. Very effective, very scary. The cloth looks great, the cane, his hands. But that is the Emperor from Return of the Jedi, the Black Series. Emperor Palpatine himself. Now, we've got a Stormtrooper. This is a Black Series Stormtrooper commemorating Return of the Jedi. Uh, it's got, it. yeah, they're, they're available for pre-order tomorrow. Hasbro Pulse is going to have it too. Uh, ben says, I immediately thought about Robot Chicken when that picture popped up. It really does look like it. Not even trying to be silly. It really does. Now, this dude is fun. Uh, this is, I want to get the exact label correct on this one. Uh, let me see how they officially wrote it up. I was like giving you the exact correct thing. Oh, here we go. This week's theme products. This company who made this Darth Vader, it, this, are, this is called the Galactic Action Vader. And it's also a Hasbro. I really like this because it's got some more electronics to it. And anytime you can put the Vader with the classic red lens, which of course is a nod to basically the making of A New Hope. I think you've got some fun stuff. So there you have it, friends. That is all. That is a lot of the featured items from this week. Be sure to... I'll go back to the beginning. Maybe. How red the eye slots are is striking. I know I like that too. I really like that too. I think that's what makes it so fun and effective, personally. Uh, Blake says, I don't own a Palpatine yet. I need one. Prequel Palps looks exactly like my dad, which is a running joke with him to this day. Well, hopefully he doesn't mind that. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I like that. All right. Speaking of uh, liking something, let's go ahead and talk about this finale of Andor Season 1. I think we can agree. Oh, maybe. I shouldn't assume. But I feel like this was a quite a brown groundbreaking series. Very effective. Very well done and orchestrated. The writing, the acting, the filming. Uh, the directing, it was just a, a master class in how to tell a good story and develop legitimately complex characters. Of course, I had to put Luthen there. It's one of the few times he actually smiles in season one. But this, I thought this was a striking image. So we are going to give you and share our top five moments from Andor Rick's Road. Josh says, let the Emmy nominations begin. Absolutely. Oh, that is a home run. I agree with you so much on that. Yeah. This is a great series. Uh, the finale, I think, was tremendous. I had fun talking about it with uh, with John Alois and Sean Degenhardt from the Hyperion Hub. They joined me to talk about the finale, which I released a day before Thanksgiving because I knew 
a lot of you will be very busy. And so I just want to get that podcasting homework out there to you. You know what I'm talking about. But let's go with number five. Number five for me is Manifesto Revisited. I could have easily put this higher. But the Manifesto we were greeted to uh, in episodes, I think they started in four, but four, five, and six. Very, very powerful. And the fact that it was a callback and that Cassian was listening to it uh, was quite moving. Uh, the speech was is great. A lot of you have posted it on Facebook in the CWK Cafe, our Facebook group, as well as on your own pages and other places. And very powerful, very well done. And I think there's some, some great impact, I believe. Uh, that was Tony Gilroy, the creator of this series. I think that was his favorite moment, bringing it back and using that manifesto. Very powerful. Again, the writing is stellar. Speaking of John Alois, there he is. Hello, John. I was just uh, complimenting you and Sean for joining me talking about this finale. So it's great to see you here. All right, Mary's number five. The end credit scene revealing that Cassie and the others were making the parts of the weapon that would eventually kill him and the people on Scarif. I can't believe I forgot to put the end credit scene on my list. But yeah, that that was a powerhouse of a moment. Nice to see. I don't feel like we've, I don't know that we've seen a post credit scene in Star Wars since uh, season two of Mandalorian. Does that sound right? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think there was one in Kenobi. I don't believe so. Number five for Ben is Bix is safe. I finally breathed a sigh of relief when she rejoined her friends. I love Bix's line about her renewed faith in Cassian. He will find them. I like that too. That was good to see. I mean, she was, what happened to her was terrible. I can't wait to see her recover and, and, and just change paths for herself because they really, uh, that was terrible. The torture was terrible. Five for Greg. Cyril and Mosk's hat swap. They are trying to operate on a level no one is really paying any attention to. Their devotion to the mission is charming and provides a little com comedic relief. Yeah, they are. It's funny how they seem so scary and intimidating, at least initially when we see them in the first half of the series. And then as time goes on, they still have it because they're so unpredictable and, and blindly loyal. But they're also comedic in their own little fashionable way, which again, it's the writing. Is the writing Brian's number five. The insurrection of Nemec's manifesto over the moments of casting when he enters the city, it sums everything up. I usually have the CC on when watching, closed caption, and ended up rewatching and, and rewinding that part several times. It hits home. Same. I highly recommend watching using the captions. Sometimes you can learn names of things and just it just helps with clarity too. Jen's number five is Mon Mothma's super spy subterfuge. As she sets up Perrin and plays uh, Chloris in the back of the limo. I love that too. It's so heartbreaking. Uh, the length she has to go to to keep herself safe and her family safe, ironically, and to help with this rebellion. Again, I said this on the show, but we don't, we never think about what it costs her. And boy, are we learning about that now. Jason's five. The sense of loss, hearing the result of Anto Krieger's failed attack. Great writing to make us care about a character who's never, ever lived on screen. That is a great point. We've never seen him on screen. And yes, we care so much about him, or at least appreciate this sacrifice here. Number five for Ross, the Star Wars community celebrating the series together. Look at this. From this group to CWK, the Colby cast, the Rebel Base card, Fanta Tracks, and so much more. Everyone made me enjoy it even more. Thank you all. Ross, that's very kind of you. I expect nothing less from one of the most selfless people I've ever met. But that is, I agree, you all have enriched my enjoyment of this series, and I love that. I mean, again, CWK, this community, the Stars community is so fun, and I learn from all of you. As I said before, and obviously Ross feels the same way. Mary has three honorable mentions, and Nimic's Manifesto is one of them. Okay, noted. Number five for Daniel, the whole Imperial feel and presence, the shuttles, death troopers, riot troopers, very oppressive. Yeah, they didn't mess around, did they? Josh's five is B, B2 uh, seeing Cassian. That was really nice. And Laurie agreed me. Yeah, it was Boba Fett at the end of Mando season two. Cool. Laurie says, Nemec's voice. It was so great to hear what he said. It was. So good. And Jen says to Jason, it's the best kind of MacGuffin. Well, I agree with that. Absolutely. Speaking of MacGuffins, did you all see the article on StarWars.com that shows all the Easter eggs in Luthen's shop? One of them is the Sankara Stones from Indiana Jones and Temple of Doom. How cool is that, right? How cool is that? Let's go ahead and jump into number four. 
Marva's message. I know that's going to show up. Oh, Jensis Cassian. Yeah, that was so sad and so beautiful, too. I know Marva's message is going to come up. Yes, I could put it earlier or later. I'm just putting it here now because I'm just, I'm just opening up the door to it. It's amazing. Uh, she's such a good actor. Uh, her real name is escaping me, so I apologize. But it's 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 like uh, this this whole episode is full of these like slow burn, rocky, get you psyched up moments, and this is one of them. There's just she's such a powerhouse in the delivery. It's almost like her spirit is infused in everyone here as they're assembling for this ceremony, this funeral processional that is so much more than that. It's a rallying cry. It's a manifesto in and of itself, and it's really well done. Okay, let me go back here and see what we've got. Mary says, Mom throwing Perry under the bus to explain, help explain where the money went, then seeing her face uh, for the rebellion when they approached the other family. Yes, excellent. Uh, Brian's number four, just like Mary's, the end credit scene to reveal what everyone was creating on Narkina 5. Uh, yeah, again, spellbindingly cool. Greg's number four, Brazos' use of Marva's brick to lay out an imperial. As my father made brick most of his life, seeing the use of brick both as a gravestone and a weapon meant a lot to me. That's cool. It's it's also very symbolic, I think, as well. Jen says, Brazo relaying Marva's last words to Cassian, tell him I love him more than anything he could ever do wrong. I replayed that particular text, uh, that dialogue in my mind several times, every time I watched it, because it's just it's just really loving. Really like that a lot. Number four for Ross, the flashback of Clem with Cassian. The adopted son is truly an, an, an is Andor, and they raised him with love and awareness in a tight knit community. Yeah, that was cool. Uh, it was quick, but it was really nice. Fiona Shaw, thank you, Mary. I knew that somebody would know, and I and I feel it might be you. That's great. Jason's number four. Cassian listening to Nemex Manifesto. I'm glad that his ideas are living on. Same here. Same here. That's so good. Ben's number four, Cyril saves Daedra. I loved how conflicted Daedra was about her helper. She wanted to hate him, but still felt grateful too. I'm really interested to see where we pick up on these two in season two. Yeah, especially as we know that season two is not one extended period of time like season one, but key moments between um, four years before Rogue One all the way up to right before Rogue One. So it'll be interesting to see how the jumps in time. Number four for Josh is the Ferrix band uniforms. Cool. Interesting. That's new. Lori's next one is Brazos. Brazo. Brazos is from uh, Only Murders in the Building, the Steve Martin fictional character. Lori's next one is Brazo and Andor seeing each other. So touching. It was great. I lo- I like. I feel like these, these hugs that they give each other are just so heartfelt and genuine. It doesn't feel like acting to me. Daniel, the manifesto made its way into this episode, and Cast is feeling that uh, how Cast is feeling now, caring, seeing a larger picture, and starting to turn. Excellent. Greg agrees. Totally heartbreaking. Lori says, "Josh, it was interesting seeing the different colors. Very much so." And then Mary says, "Ben, that is my second honorable mention. Look at that. We're all on the same page as always." All right, let's go into number three. Look at all these lists. It's so nice to see so many of you here. I'm so glad to see this. Makes me happy. Uh, number three for me is the, I put Ferrex Convergence. What I like about this is just the way they intertwine all the stories together so organically and naturally where they're all meeting uh, where this processional is right in the middle of the downtown area for lack of a better terminology. And you can just feel the tension and the excitement. And even when I watched it a second time and I knew what was going to happen, I still was just riveted and on the edge of my seat seeing how it all tied together. Absolutely beautiful. Again, so well done. If there is a a synonym for extremely well done or well written or well acted, let me know because I think that very much applies here. So that was my number three. Again, how everyone converges on the Ferrex itself. Lori agreed that it was amazing. Greg's number three. He agrees with Ross. Clem's lesson for Cassian. Heartwarming. And some lessons, obviously, he takes to note. Jason's three is Cyril and Daedra. Both 
being very confident and in control in a secure environment, but then becoming completely rattled when there's chaos. Indeed. Josh's number three is simply Luthen's smile, which I also loved. Gen three, Nemec's manifesto montage of Bix, Luthen, and Cassian. I love that it used Nemec's words for a higher purpose to comment on what we're seeing. All the other characters do think and feel, not just Cassian. Exactly. That's what's so great about it. Number three for Mary, Cassian saving Bix. Then putting her on the ship with Brazo and B2. She knows Cassian will find them again. And his last words are, I will find you. Powerful. And you know it's true. Ben's three, as it's been said, Mon Moth must cover accusing Perrin of gambling to cover up her need for the loan. And her driver takes the bait. She's got the spy game down. Yes, and it also shows how it's not as glamorous as people think. Daniel's number three, uh, Daedra and Cyril save. Tense and exciting and found myself not wanting Daedra harmed. Yeah, that's cool. And I think, that, again, that that's so hard to do that as a writer and a creator of fictional characters is you don't like and support them, but you also don't want them anything to happen to them. It's just, it's, it's just so unique. I, I can't think of any other stories that are truly like it. And number three for Brian. Mon's decision with Perrin about his gambling. She uses him as an excuse for the reallocated credits that the Empire has been keeping an eye on. It took me some time to realize that their marriage must have been arranged as in the Chandrillan tradition. Yeah, I think so too. Ross is three as Mon Mothma as a brilliant strategist. Using Perrin's former gambling problems as a cover for her financial irregularities. What will she lose in terms of family from her gambling? A lot. I think a lot. And it's again, makes me appreciate her all the more because of what she's had to give up. And, you know, did Perrin make it easy? I don't know. I don't know anything about their, their history, but we certainly get a nice little snapshot. Lori says, and or saving Bix was a selfless act for him. It was. He's grown so much in this season, and I really appreciate that about him, about this character. Let's go on to number two. I put Cassian's humility, and this ties into what Lori just mentioned. I love in this series that it, when it first starts out, he's very selfish. Uh, he plays things really close to the vest. People are getting hurt um, in his wake, and he may care, but doesn't. he doesn't care enough to stop it or reroute what he does or why he does it. I think the why is more important than the how or the when. Um, and in here, as time goes on, he realizes that there's more to lose than just whatever he's scheming at, but the people that he loves in his community and his family uh, and his droid, so many things and his humility and selflessness. It was nice to see because it really, besides the performances and the interesting, the incredible acting, Cassie was a hard character for me to really like because of how he acted. But over time, the genius of this story is that I grew to appreciate him and, and really like him and understand him more. But that wasn't happening for a long time, and I'm sure that was by design. Mary's number two, Cassian telling Luthen to kill me or take me in, and then Luthen's smile. There's that smile again. Jen's two is Marva's broadcast to Farrah. It's not just a speech. It's a speech act because it sparks the Rick's Road uprising. We have been sleeping. If I could do it again, I wake up early and be fighting these. You know what's from the start. Yeah, so good. Inspiring. Greg's two, the Ferrix Citizen Revolt. A wild card that neither side was really expecting and the fallout has effects on all sides. Yeah, everyone is impacted. Very much so. Jason's two, the power of the funeral march, the sense of community, the somber music and the marching band colors. The workers' gloves on the wall in the background and the shift in the music's tone to a more hopeful and triumphant song. Well done. Yeah. Speaking of that, I believe I mentioned last week, but on Thursday, I've got a great show for you. The composer of season one of Andor, Nicholas Bertel, joins me live. Not live. It was live when I recorded it. He joins me for a one-on-one -on -one interview all about the music from season one. I can't wait until you hear it. It's going to blow you away. He's, he's a fascinating man. We're really honored to get a chance to speak with him. Uh, Luthen, sorry, Ross is to his Luthen smirk as he listens to Marva's final words, and he does it again when Cassian offers himself to the rebellion aboard the Fondor. Brian's too, and or saving Vix, he is in beast mode and nothing will stop him. Interesting description. Daniel's to the funeral procession, 
uh, the eventual gathering and the intensifying band music all played into this culmination and tension in the town square. Well said. Lori says his mama really motivated from the grave. Pretty cool. Uh, similarly, J Josh is too is the funeral procession and the haunting music. And Ben's too. Casting giving Luthen the choice. I love the moments of these two together earlier in the season. So I can't wait for more. But more importantly, I love how Casting has decided after all these near-death experiences, he'd rather die than not be in the rebellion. And that's exactly right. Mary's, that's actually her final honorable mention. The music, it truly enhanced everything in this episode. What do you hear how he talks about coming up with some of these themes too? And it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. It adds so much. But it is time for our number one. From the throat. Number one for me, goodbyes and hellos. And what I mean by that is how Kasten says goodbye to his friends as they get on the ship and, and fly away. And he says, as some of you mentioned before, I'll find you. And then his conversation with Luthen as he sneaks onto Luthen's ship, again showing his stealth uh, and his uh, espionageical espionageical acumen. How about that? Is that a real word, Jen? We'll just pretend like it is. Uh, just really brilliant, really really great. Uh, but it just it's just a nice goodbye and a hello to whatever the future holds. I just think it was really well done. It feels like I say this all the time, but. My number ones are almost always what happens at the end because they always end these so well. I think ending something is one of the hardest things to do when crafting a story. And they always leave me satisfied and wanting more at the same time, which that is a gift. That is a storytelling gift. Ben says, we all helped Mary get her top 10 in here. Go team. <laughs> That's true. Ross, the build up to and delivery of if I could do it again, I wake up early and be fighting those you know what's from the start. Fighting the Empire. That's Marva. Absolutely. Josh's number one is Marva's eulogy for herself. Ooh, interesting. I didn't think about that way, but it really is. Greg's number one is also Marva's speech. She was a rebel, rebel leader. She turned out to be. Did Luthen know about her all along? I don't know. It's a good question. If he did and he still wanted um, to kill Cassian, then that's not good, but it would be par for the course of what we know of him. Interesting idea. Jason's one. Marva's words to Cassian through Brazo. Tell me he knows everything he needs to know and feels everything he needs to feel. And when the day comes and those two pull together, he'll be an unstoppable force for good. I love him more than anything he could ever do wrong. Thank you for giving the exact quote there. It's brilliant. Brian's number one, the juxtaposition of the Empire setting up Rick's Road as a funnel to trap Cassian and the citizens of Ferex using the same funnel to lash out and punch the Empire in the face. You're all phrasing things so beautifully tonight. I love it. Jen's number one, Cassian waiting for Luthen and saying, kill me or take me in. This had to be number one because it's the perfect end to Cassian's arc this season. He's been through so much and evolved so much since the first conversation he had with Luthen on the Fondor back in episode three. Number one for Mary, the funeral possession and, the, and Marva's eulogy speech. The music reminded me of a New Orleans jazz funeral parade. I agree. That's exactly what I said on the show this week. Throughout the, the monologue, everyone is looking up either at Marva or up at a staircase or up to the top of the building. The climb inference continues. Ah, well done. Well done. Lori's next one is the whole Rick's road scene was amazing. Bringing everyone together is so good. And Mary says, Ben, top five was just not enough. No, not for this episode. I agree. Number one for Daniel is Marva's last words. So glad she got that scene as an actor and a character. Agreed. Her close locals knew what her recording said, and they were ready for the for the natural uprising. It was a big mistake to cover B two. Uh, made the crowd more fired up. Yeah, I know. I agree. And you wonder if everyone else kind of has the same understanding of the of the pathos that is B two. And Ben's were one marvelous speech of all the reasons this season to give Cassian to join the rebellion. It's only fitting that his adopted mother speech would be the last thing to galvanize him and the town to rebel. Bravo, friends. Bravo. Wow. Amazing. Again, as Ross mentioned earlier, the great thing about this community is we learn more about what we think. And it helps to process it, really, to kind of break it out. Again, the purpose of the show from the beginning for me was to feel like I'm sitting in a coffee house talking to my friends about Star Wars. And, hey, mission accomplished. Cheers to all of you. I'm toasting you with my invisible coffee mug, although I've got plenty. Oh, okay. Why not? Sure. Cheers to all of you. 
go, go. Wow. Authentic coffee <laughs> drinking. How about that? I mean, this is why you came to Coffee with Kenobi CWK Live, right? For, for authentic things like that. Let's go ahead and jump. Oh, actually, you know what? I need to tell you about next week. What is next week, you ask? Well, next week, we're going to talk about Tales of the Jedi, life and death. Look, I could combine the Ahsoka ones and the Dooku ones in two episodes. But honestly, I want to talk about these individually because they're so good. And I want to talk about it with my people. So next week, rewatch Life and Death, the first episode from Tales of the Jedi, which just came out a, about a month ago, if that. And we're talking about the birth of Ahsoka Tano. What a great thing to be able to say. Greg uh, says, an authentic coffee mug clicking noise, right? It's just like it really happened. John says, cheers, Dan. Another great show. Well, thanks, John. Appreciate that. Ben says, gulp, gulp. Please make that a sound on your soundboard. Ooh, now there. There's a great little tip. So let me tell you kind of how I envision this going. I know that uh, Willow's coming out tomorrow. And people are very excited about that. If you're a fan of Lucasfilm and you're a fan of that original film, then you're excited about Willow. I'm excited about Willow too. So I, I want to cover it, uh, but I'm not going to do top fives of it uh, and unless you really want to. But I thought I really, I thought I would split it up. I thought the top fives, the live shows will be for Tales of the Jedi for the next six weeks. And then Coffee with Kenobi, I'm just going to break down individual episodes of Willow. So if you are a loyal listener and you are a regular on CWK Live, I want you to join me as we break down Willow. Uh, some of you have already joined me before. Some of you have joined me several times. But uh, let me know if you want to join me to break down episodes of Willow. I thought that would be great fun. And why should I not uh, reward members of the CWK Live community who join me all the time? I mean, seriously, the show doesn't happen without you. You're who I interact with and get to talk with. So I think I'll make a post. Uh, in the CWK Cafe, if you are a regular here on CWK Live. Or, I mean, sometimes that's impossible because of your schedules, and I completely understand that. It's so hard to find a consistent schedule for all of you to join me. It, sometimes it's hard, you know, on my end as well. So go, just go ahead and post in that CWK Live spot, which I'm going to post after the show. And I will try to get you in so we can talk about Willow. Mary says, oh, well, first, Jason says he's hoping we look at Tales of Jedi. Great. I'm glad to hear it. Mary's also excited. Love these episodes so much. Brought us back to the Clone Wars so well. So much so. Ross watched the Willow movie again last week. Awesome. Dana wants to know when the regular show airs. So, uh, Coffee with Kenobi airs every Thursday. Whenever, wherever you find and listen to podcasts. iTunes, Spotify, Spreaker, Stitcher. There's even an audio version on YouTube as well. Every Thursday morning it drops at 6 a.m. And gosh, I was just looking at my calendar today. Nine and a half years of this show. Nine and a half years of coffee with Kenobi, the regular podcast. Insane. Mary says, Tales of the Jedi five, top five sh shows should fit us right into the Bad Batch. Exactly. I believe it starts in early January. I think they may have moved it back to February, but either way, that was kind of what I was thinking too. I'll talk about Tales of the Jedi, uh, see what kind of comes up, and then we'll jump into season two of the Bad Batch, which would be great, great fun. All right. Speaking of great fun, it's time to jump into Ask Dan Z. Wow, my hair was short then. Yes. Uh, okay. Brian says, can't wait to talk about Tales of Jedi. It was so good. It really was phenomenal. I, I just want to watch it again anyway. And they're shorter episodes, so they're a little more digestible. And then you can really pack in which one for your top five. Ben says, if I had Drax and Mantis kidnap a famous person for you for Christmas, who would it be? Just kidding. Did you enjoy the holiday special? Dude, I loved the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. I laughed so hard the whole time. Mason loved it too. In fact, immediately after the live show, I'm going to jump on another call and I'm going to talk with Corey and Tom and we're going to break it down for CWK pour over this week. So we're going to talk all about the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. Jess says, same about Tales of the Jedi. I feel like I got lost in the shuffle when it dropped. How many podcasts covered it? Exactly. So I really want to give it the credit it deserves because it's a beautiful beautiful series uh and probably we'll see other people jumping in on it too who knows because it, as a content creator it does get tricky for sure but hey we do what we can mary says now that we're finished with andor will mason be joining us again it's so ironic that you said that i asked him and he said yeah he's been uh on tuesday nights he's been reading he's been 
doing some stuff for school. Um, so sometimes he's a busy little dude, but yeah, I will definitely tell him. He and I have been talking a lot about the Galactic Star Cruiser. Corey and Tom and I were talking about it. Uh, if you are still considering it, I've talked with MEI and Mouse Travel yesterday. They still have spots available. Join me on the Galactic Star Cruiser June 12th to the 14th. Several of you watching the show now are also going to be joining me, as well as people who are members of the CWK community. Summer 2023, again, June 12th to the 14th. I'll be there. Mason will be there. Tom Gross, Corey Club, and several of you. We're going to go to Batu, take lightsaber training, uh, play Sabak, eat some amazing cuisine. I hear the world galactic famous guy is saying it's going to be so much fun i mean if you're not going to celebration this is a great alternative let me tell you really looking forward to it and seeing and hanging out with all of you well that is going to do it with this week's episode of cwk live i want to thank all of you for joining me to talk about this and bring your list this is a a wonderful turnout it was great to see all of you. It really means so much to me. You can add so much to the show. I truly appreciate it, and I truly appreciate each and every one of you. So I will see you next week. Look Thursday for my interview with Nicholas Patel, the composer of Andor Season 1. And prepare to really learn some cool stuff about what goes into making music for Star Wars. He's the first composer I've had on the show, I believe. Yeah, I think so. Uh, so that's going to be great, great fun. Uh, Mary says, have a great week. Have a great week to you, Mary. And Brian says, we watched Guardians of the Galaxy Christmas on Sunday. My youngest was Justin Footloose for his high school production. Got all the Kevin Bacon references. We we're laughing all the way. That's great. Uh, Jen says, Dan, thanks, Dan. What a, what a way to close out an amazing series. Well, thank you, Jen. I appreciate it. And love, love having you join us, Lori. Love having you as well. Have a great week. Thanks for doing this. My absolute pleasure. Greg, thanks for joining us, my friend. We'll see you online. Looking forward to it. Jason, great to be with you. Have a great week. And Daniel said I added to my iTunes cube. May the force be with you all. Oh, great, Daniel. There's a lot of fun stuff back there that you'll enjoy going back through. Ross, thank you. Great spending time with you as well. Have a great week. Thanks again, everybody. Be well. Be safe. And I don't know. Have a great week. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.